everybody, I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson, and do I have a special treat for you. Have you all ever wondered, what is the secret to being debt-free? I know there are a lot of schools of thoughts out there, but one that I have been following has been working very well for me, and I've brought one of the instructors with me to share all the steps with you. His name is Josh. Thank you for joining me today, Josh. Hi, thank you for having me. So, Josh, I um, opened up my show stating that we're all in debt and we all need to figure out how to get out of it. Can you tell us a little bit of something about yourself and how you got out of debt? Sure. <clears throat> we, um, we started out with about $27,500 in debt uh, a little, little more than two years ago. Uh -huh. um, and we found that we needed, we needed, um, sorry, we needed a a way to not live paycheck to paycheck. Uh -huh. We needed a, a solution. So we started, um, I started talking to some people and they said the name Dave Ramsey. And uh -huh. I'd heard of him before. I'd even heard him on the radio, but you know, it was, I just turned the radio to another station. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so a friend of mine at work said, hey, check out Dave Ramsey. And so I did. And uh -huh. um, we decided that we would take our group through it. Um, at church, our church group through it, and after I took it, I realized this is like I need to do this for everybody. I need to teach as many people as I can. Uh -huh. And so um, we started following Dave's program, and you know we got our uh, some savings. We got our we went through the debt snowball. We got our debt paid off in about two years, uh -huh. um, and now we're on our way to financial freedom. Wow. You know, is that really the American way? A lot of people would say no because we work to pay off debt, right? Mm. You mentioned Dave Ramsey, and he has a lot of very good information out there. But when I started following him and following the things that you were teaching me too, he has some baby steps, and they're really quite easy. So can we talk about those baby steps? Sure. So what is the very first baby step? The very first baby step is $1,000 emergency fund. Uh -huh. And you have to do that first. If you want to get out of debt, because Murphy always shows up at your house. Yes. So, so if, as soon as you try to get out of debt, if you don't have an emergency fund, your water heater will go out. And then you'll need to go buy a water heater. Mm -hmm. And what you'll do, you'll take the card back out and start moving backwards when you're making moving forward. So uh -huh. don't, don't go one step forward, two steps back. Get yourself an emergency fund. $1,000, which is our baby small emergency fund, $1,000. So what are some different ways that you could reach this $1,000 emergency fund? Well, the key to the whole program, I uh -huh. believe, is the B word, budget. Uh. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you though, for us, budget was freeing. Uh -huh. Now me and my wife don't get in a lot of arguments or anything like that, but whenever we had some contention, it was because she wouldn't spend some more money. I managed the money by myself. Uh -huh. um, and she would go spend more money than we had talked about. Now uh -huh. she, of course, didn't think it was a big deal. You know, no big deal. But it happened a couple of times, and then I got to figure out what bill I'm not uh -huh. going to pay because, of course, we're living paycheck to paycheck because we had no plan. Uh -huh. um, so what happened is we sit down and we start talking about money together. We start making a budget together, and uh -huh. we start realizing where we're spending our money together. Uh -huh. um, and what happened is everything gets dropped in a category. We we account for all our income minus our outgo always comes to zero. That doesn't mean we spend all our money. That means some of the money we save, okay. some of the money at the time we were putting towards debt or towards the $1,000 uh -huh. like you asked. So what happened was we all stuck to the budget and it actually removed any contention from our marriage. It removed um, the desire to go out and overspend because I knew that we had a plan and we were going to stick uh -huh. to this plan. So what would you suggest for someone, a beginner like me? I've already reached that first step, but what are some things they could do to reach this $1,000? So you could have a yard sale, uh -huh. get rid of some stuff. You got a lot of stuff, there's always more stuff. And so when yes. you're, guess what? Right now, you're not in a place to have a lot of stuff. Down the line, Dave Ramsey says today, live like no one else. So later you can live and give like no one else. Uh -huh. And so get rid of some stuff. You don't need all that stuff. And so I have a yard sale. That's the fastest way probably to get $1,000.
The other way, like I said, make a budget. You'll uh -huh. see where you're overspending. Uh, for me, it was going out to eat, especially at work. Yes. And it wasn't even the eating. I know it might look like it's just about the eating, <laughs> but <laughs> it was about, it was really about the camaraderie of going out to uh -huh. eat. So I would go out for breakfast at work. I'd go out for lunch at work. And I realized I was spending hundreds of dollars oh, yeah. every month going out to eat. So really, if I just cut the going mm -hmm. out to eat, I could then make the $1,000 mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. couple of months, really. Mm -hmm. So cut some things out. Look at your budget. Don't be afraid to look at the budget. Take a look at it. See where you're spending uh -huh. everything and stick to it. And then it's easy to get a It's easy to do. So what is baby step number two? Baby step number two is the debt snowball. And the debt snowball um, is, there's, there's several ways to have a debt snowball. There are, there are several terms. There's the avalanche, which is pay off the highest interest rate. Uh -huh. There is the, there is pay off the highest amount one first or there's this called the debt snowball. The debt snowball is pay off the smallest debt okay, all the way down to the largest. So what you're going to do when you're doing debt snowball is you're going to stop doing everything else you're doing. Stop investing, stop putting money in all these other places. You're just going to focus on this. So you'll pay off the smallest debt. Let's say the smallest debt um, is a thousand dollars and your minimum payments ten dollars a month on it. So mm -hmm, you're gonna look mm -hmm. in your budget You've been already saving this thousand dollars So you have you know you have a little extra every month You take what you had in that thousand dollars and you apply it to your smallest debt So now say I had a hundred dollars left over uh -huh. and I was putting that towards savings I got my thousand dollars now. I'm paying a hundred and ten dollars towards that smallest debt now the rest of your ah. debts The rest of your debts you're paying the minimum payment on uh -huh. so I'm gonna get knock that one out real quick You know it was a thousand dollars and you know now I'm paying a hundred and ten dollars a month towards it so if you had a let's say a gas card and a department store card and your regular Matt uh, credit card so you pay off that gas card first like twenty dollars and the regular payment for the others right. Is that so, right? so you keep paying the minimum payment okay. on all of the other cards so mm -hmm. don't pay extra on certain ones pay extra pay as much as you can towards that smallest debt uh-huh because the problem is, the problem is not a mathematical equation. The problem with financials and people struggling with their finances is the person they're looking at in the mirror. Yes. It, it's habits, it's, it's wins, it's, it's, it's that kind of thing because finances is this. It's about, it's about us, uh -huh. not really about, about some number game, right? The, huh. the key to wealth is to fix ourselves. Okay. So anyway, so you're going to spend, you're going to, pay off the smallest one, then you're going to take what you're paying to, towards that, let's say you're paying $110 uh -huh. towards that a month, say your next bill, uh, your next debt is $2,000, and you're paying $40 a month of that. So now you're going to be paying $150 a month towards that one. And by the time you get to the end, it's every time it goes over, it rolls, and it makes a bigger snowball, and a bigger snowball, and a bigger mm. snowball. And for us, um, you know, by the time we got to our largest, which was my wife's vehicle, uh -huh. um, we were paying over $900 a month towards it wow. because our snowball had gotten so big. And that's, that's the key to the, to the debt snowball is that all of a sudden you just keep picking up more and more steam. It only took us like two months at that point to pay off the car. Wow, that's unheard of. Whoa, that is really good. And so the great thing is once you've gotten the debt paid off, uh -huh. now I have an extra nine, almost thousand dollars a month towards disposable income, which would then, of course, bring us to baby step number three. Okay, and that is? Baby step number three is a three to six fully funded emergency fund. That's tough. Not when you have a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, that's of true. Of disposable income. Uh huh. This is why the baby steps are so important. You got to follow them or uh -huh. they don't work. Uh -huh. So. So now I have $1,000 a month of disposable income that I was paying towards debt. Now I can take that $1,000 a month and put it towards three to six months of expenses. Now three to six months of expenses does not mean three to six months of my budget or my income. Uh -huh. It just means well, I need to buy food and I need to have shelter and I need to have clothing and, and I need to pay my utilities. Um, but it doesn't mean that I still get, you know, during that period, if I were to have lost my job, it doesn't mean that I get spending cash or we have to go have entertainment yeah you know, if you lose your job you don't do those kind of things but it will cover me for three to six months if i've lost my job okay or some other big problem happens because not everything you can cover with a thousand dollars you can cover a lot of stuff with a thousand dollars but if 
something more catastrophic happens uh -huh. where I have to, you know, go to the hot, be in the hospital or something for a long period of time, that's a good amount of money to have uh -huh. to to cover that kind of thing. So, so is it possible to do steps one, two, and three all together? No. No. I mean, it's possible if you have a lot of cash. <laughs> sure. Um, if you don't have, I mean, if you have a lot of cash, yes, you can knock one, two, and three out. Uh huh. And then never go back to being in debt. Uh huh. Um, so, so you could, but uh -huh. most people aren't in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, Josh, let's take a short break while I digest this some more because I think I started off on the wrong foot on these steps. But we'll talk about that during the break, okay? Okay. All right. So you can't save money? That's easy as pie. Brown bag and lunch instead of going out. $6 save times five days a week times 10 years is 21,000 bucks. That's a lot of lettuce. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. <laughs> the average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Welcome back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Josh, and we're going over Dave Ramsey's seven steps, and they're called baby steps, which right. is a good term to use when you want to get started on being debt-free. Now, we talked about one, two, and three. What is debt number, step number four? Step number four is investing in your retirement. <laughs> so now you've got an emergency fund, a fully funded emergency uh -huh. fund. You have all your debt paid off. You have disposable income from what you're paying on uh -huh. your debt for us. So it was a thousand dollars or about a thousand dollars. And you know we have some peace right now, right? Um, we don't have any debt. We, if I lose my job or we have a big accident, uh -huh. then we're covered. So at this point, we invest 15% of our income. That's a lot. Not when you have the disposable income. <laughs> well, it's not, it's I not keep so forgetting bad. that. Yeah. So now, for us, now we have $1,000 uh -huh. a month, um, which is more than 15% um, of what my income is. So, uh -huh. so I have this big chunk of money, and I can use that to invest in my wow. retirement. Now, a lot of people are concerned that yeah. that baby step Four comes before baby step five, which is investing in your kid's college. But to go back to four, you're going to retire. Uh, one day. You're going to either retire at retirement age or uh -huh. you're going to retire when you're in the grave. <laughs> you're going to be forced to retire. Yes. So, so retirement <laughs> is the most important thing. Your kids may or may not go to college, but uh -huh. you are certainly going to retire. And for me, I want to retire with dignity. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to do this. We're going to put away 15% in mutual funds or 401ks um, to to take care of us when we're ready to retire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so that is baby step number four. And as I mentioned, baby step number five is save for your kid's college. Okay, so how much should you save for your kid's college? As much as it takes. So so you could, there's charts and stuff online, figure out how much goes uh -huh. in the cost when your kids reach a certain age. Um, but as much as you can to meet those goals. now. Not, there's a lot of people that might be listening to this um, that their kids are like a year or two away from college. And there's yes. some things you can do for college. It doesn't mean that mom and dad always have to pay for it, but do not, please do not take a loan out if uh -huh. you can completely avoid taking a loan out. They say that <clears throat> kids who work tend to do better in school because they learn time management and organizational skills. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that have worked their way through school and done very well mm -hmm. in school. 
Another option is avoid state or avoid out of state schools. You mm -hmm. have state schools and you get a huge discount. Is it really worth paying double for your school and living with all this debt when you get out just to uh -huh. go to another state? Um, so that that kind of stuff's important when you're talking about this. Uh huh. So your kids are they young kids? My kids are young. I, uh -huh. have, I have a two-year-old, just turned two. Aww. Um, I have a seven-year-old and an eight-year-old. Uh-huh. So you're saving for all three of them to go to college? Right now, we're, we are in baby step number three, so we're not saving anything oh. just yet. So, but we will be. Uh -huh. And we'll be saving a lot of money for our kids to go to school. And uh -huh. yes, I do. I would like them to go to college, um, and I would like to be able to pay for that for them. So what would you tell a person that's single and does not have kids? about baby step number five? Well, you get to skip baby step number five. Ah. And go straight to baby step number six. And what is baby step number baby six? Baby step number six <laughs> is paying off your house early. Uh-huh. Um, and you can do baby step four, five, and six all at the same time. A lot of people, a lot of people, especially where you have dual income families, uh -huh. are, are gonna have trouble getting the 15%. They may not have trouble getting a full funded college fund going, uh, invest it in you know, a um, 529 plan um, for their kids, invest in mutual funds, and pay off their house early. Actually, uh -huh. a typical person that goes through this um, pays off their house in seven years. Seven years? Do they refinance it to pay off that early or? If they follow the steps, they can get to that point. Exactly. So oh, so I'm starting steps, to catch up. <laughs> follow the steps. So, so let's say, for example, somebody like me is they have a thousand dollars disposable income now, uh -huh. and they put five hundred dollars a month away in retirement. They put a hundred dollars away. They put a hundred or two hundred dollars away for their kid's college, uh -huh. and then they have an additional amount of money left over to put into their house and pay off their house early. So, let's take a short break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask you about this paying your house early, okay? okay. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson, here with Josh. Now, Josh, we got through baby step one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, baby step number six, you say, is to pay off your house. Now, some people say that's a good idea. Some people say it's not. Why do you think that's a good idea? So a lot of people go to hear the argument that there are tax benefits to having yes. a mortgage. Now, you have to understand, the tax benefit comes from the interest you pay to your bank. Uh huh. So if I'm paying a house payment, and let's say I'm paying $1,000 in interest every month, I can write off $10,000. Right. OK. Now, if I pay my house off early, yes. I'm just going to get taxed 25% on that $10,000. Uh -huh. But now I have thousands of dollars still in my pocket. And oh. so guess what? You pay Uncle Sam, 
on your $10,000, but at least you're not giving all $10,000 to your bank. Okay. This is why the bank's house or the bank's buildings are big and our houses are small. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it that way. <laughs> so, or it could be a grandiose idea. Uh -huh. If you love your tax write-off, rather than giving it to your bank and getting a tax write-off on it, you could find your favorite charity and huh. give, give your $10,000 to that charity. And now you still have the same tax write-off, but you've helped a cause that you agree with. Okay. So it's a win-win either way, or should you just pay the house off? You should off? pay the house off. Pay the house you off. You can find ways to get the tax benefit in a different manner <laughs> than paying their bank interest. Yeah, that's true. Like giving it to some nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. or schools or mm -hmm. the list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So I think we're down to baby step number seven. So which one is that? Baby step number seven is the fun baby step. Uh -huh. It's just to live and give like nobody else, right? So all of this, all of this stuff brings us to a point where now we have financial peace, we have financial freedom, we have uh -huh. our investments, we're ready to retire soon, we have all this money that is growing and we have thousands, millions of dollars um, because we've consistently made budgets, we've gotten out of debt, uh -huh. we've invested and we've consistently invested and now we have millions of dollars. And so we can now live and live our dreams because we work too hard. We work too hard our whole lives to end yes. up with nothing. So, so now we have consistently done all these steps and now we get to go on vacation that we want to go on to. We get to live in the house we want. We get to drive the cars we want to drive and we get to give because it's all empty. The best part of having money is giving it away. Hmm. You keep saying that, but I don't know. So are you telling me that you can't really take a vacation until after you get to baby step seven? No, you can take a vacation. Many ones. Take a, take a vacation. <laughs> but if you want to take a vacation around the world that costs uh -huh. thousands of dollars, oh, yes. now you can. Uh -huh. And that's a cool thing. So when you start all this, the best way to start it is to dream a little. Uh -huh. Say, okay, where do I want to be? Where, wh when do I want to retire? Uh -huh. Where do I want to go? What do we want to do? Who do we want to help uh -huh. when you start all this? Because like I said, it's the person in the mirror. It's not a math equation. Mm -hmm, so you've mm -hmm. got to give yourself some encouragement. This is where, this is my end goal. That's the mm -hmm. light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get there. And as you go through this, you're going to see yourself getting closer and closer and closer to that light at the end of the tunnel. Huh. You know, you mentioned earlier that you have three small ones at home. What are you doing to teach them about saving money or managing their own money? So our kids, are on, we, we call it commissions. Mm -hmm. They don't get an allowance. Allowance means you get handouts. Commissions mean you have to work to get money. And that's uh -huh. what I want to teach my kids, that if they want to get money, work. I want the two to be at us, sorry, synonymous with uh -huh. each other. I want them to, to know that work equals money. So they work and they do a chore and they get paid for it. And we pay consistently every week, just like we get paid. Right. So, so um, so when payday comes, they get paid. Please, please, please keep your kids consistent on your paycheck. Just like you want to get paid, they want to uh -huh. get paid consistently. And, and they've done really good with it. It's, it. it's really cool to see them. They'll save. They have jars and they'll save 10%. They'll give 10% and then they'll, and, they'll, and, they'll, and they'll get to spend the rest. The rest is just spending uh -huh. cash. And um, so that's what we do with our kids. They get commissions, not allowance, no handouts, uh -huh. and they buy their own stuff. Do you find with your children that one is more of a thrifty type person or one likes to spend more money? Yes. <laughs> Even though you're trying your hardest yeah. to make them stick to a budget? Yeah, I mean, they kind of flip-flops, but uh -huh. when they know they want something, they'll save for it. Uh -huh. um, but mostly my, my son, it gets he gets a burning in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he's got money and he wants to spend it. My daughter will save up for a little while and, uh -huh. and buy something that she wants, some dolls or something like uh -huh. that. And then, of course, the baby's not on on uh, commissions yet, but he will uh -huh. be soon. You know, the American way is for us to just work, 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 work. Do you think that this plan is going to keep us from working as hard as we are working now? You mean later in life? Later in life. Yes. Yes, I mean, you, you, you do the baby steps and you can retire. Uh -huh. I mean, it's all in your hands, right? And I, I feel so sad when I see people at 
Walmart, greeters at Walmart, or, or you know, older people that, that have, have to work. Yeah. You know, they have to work because they just can't make it. I mean, the government's not well known for, for uh, saving for you. This is true. Um, I've looked at my Social Security statement. It's not good. It's not looking good for my uh. generation <laughs> or the generations following me. Um, so, you know, I, I feel sad. I feel sad mm -hmm. for, for these people. And, you know, some people work because they want something to do. But uh -huh. for me, I want to be doing something I want to do, not necessarily working somewhere uh -huh. just to work. So, um, yeah, I don't want to see people working. I, wanna, I, I plan to retire when I'm, when I'm 54 years old. Wow. And we are on track for that. So You are? Yes. You and your wife? Me and my wife. We're gonna, I'm going to retire. Wow. You know, we've gone over all these baby steps. And what I have forgotten to do is to tell people how they can reach out to you. If they want more information about Dave Ramsey, how can they reach out to you? Well, if you want to find more information about Dave Ramsey, of course, he has a website, mm -hmm. DaveRamsey.com. Um, he has a radio show also. You can download his podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to reach out to me, we do this, like I said, through our church. Um, through a group, so you can go to elevationchurch.org and go to groups, and uh -huh. you'll find our group. It's a uh, Seagull Financial PC group. Uh -huh. Any lasting words of advice for my viewers and for me about following the steps and getting to step seven? Well, make a plan. Uh huh. You know, um, they say when you you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. <laughs> Um, so may have a plan. Uh -huh. I mean, you have to have a plan. You talk to successful people; they have a plan. So have a plan. That's true. And follow that plan and stick to that plan. This stuff really works. I hear it on the, his radio show all the time. Uh -huh. People do debt-free screams. They've gotten out of debt. They're well on their way to wealth. He does a a millionaire hour show where he has millionaires, and it's just the guy next door, right? Just wow. this guy that consistently, if you listen to the millionaire show, person after person after person makes a normal wage. Uh -huh. They paid off their debt. They didn't go out and buy new cars. So you have to understand that the average person spends over five hundred dollars a month on a car payment. Uh -huh. And and if you were to invest that at twelve percent, that 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 five hundred dollars a month would be worth about five point eight million dollars a month. So you have to understand wealthy people don't have. A lot of people will say wealthy people don't have car payments because they're wealthy, mm -hmm. but it's really the flip of that. Wealthy people are wealthy because they don't have car payments. This is true. So, so don't stay in debt. Uh -huh. Don't give the bank your money. Keep your money. Save it. Use it for your retirement. Use it to give away to people that need it. Right. Because that's where your real joy comes from. Mm -hmm. So have a plan and look at the light at the end of the tunnel. Wow, thank you so much for coming today. You gotta come back. I will. Because I'm sure there are other things that we can talk about about saving That's money. Right. And I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my show, A Better You, here on Public Access 21 every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Gosh, thanks so much. You know the baby step one? <laughs>